Let's turn our attention to, well, and this all seems rather silly when you're looking at people fighting for their lives uh, after that earthquake, but uh, uh, the trans row that's been ongoing, particularly involving Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP in Scotland, um, has uh, damaged, what a surprise, uh, both Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP's uh, 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 popularity in Scotland. Scotland's First Minister's personal ratings have slid into negative territory for the first time. Uh, many are saying that this is her gender reform bill, allowing people to just self-ID after a matter of weeks as the, whichever gender they think they are that Wednesday, uh, to be her poll tax moment. Well, let's talk about this with Helen Joyce, Director of Advocacy at Sex Matters and also author of the brilliant book Trans, When Ideology Meets Reality. Good morning to you, Helen. Hi, Julia. Thank you for joining us. I have to say, when I saw this story at the weekend about the surgeon's poll tax moment, I, my first thought was the title of your book, When Ideology Meets Reality. We had some, I mean, just sort of, I mean, just uh, absurd conversations, absurd interviews with not just Nicola Sturgeon, a question time appearance from an SNP MP as well, where they were twisting themselves into, I mean, absolute contortion so, uh, about trying to not answer the question about whether or not the man who raped two women or the man who stalked a 13-year-old girl, whether or not he was indeed a man, even though he was pretending he was a woman or not. And they seem to have come up with a third gender, or almost four genders. There's, there are men, there are women, there are rapists, and there are, there are individuals. Um, it, there's no wonder this has hit her in the polls, is there? Well, it was such a stupid idea in the first place to say that people could be the opposite sex. And it obviously, when you play it through, leads you to worse than absurd, actually wicked situations like putting rapists in women's jails. And so, yeah, her, her chickens have come home to roost and I am very happy indeed. She really brought this on herself. Let's remember it was very unpopular. Whenever Scottish people are asked, they say they don't want this policy. They don't want 16 year olds able to change their legal sex. They don't want people to be able to do it without medical supervision. But yet the discipline in the Scottish Parliament is such and Nicola Sturgeon's discipline over her party is such that she was just able to steamroll it through. There were more than 150 amendments were suggested and one of those was that somebody who is facing trial for a sexual crime would not be able to change his sex and they voted that down in the parliament just yeah. weeks before and that's before. the thing it, because because it was never going to happen it wasn't an issue and this is the thing they, they could have protected against this to the extent that you could protect it and they were defending it's the the prison governors and the prison they 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 can make these decisions and there's a proper risk assessment as i pointed out to a politician last week the risk assessment just don't need a risk assessment look down their pants what, what do you see? Yes. Well, there you are then. We've established the risk. You're a man and you shouldn't be in a cell with a woman. Nothing complicated about this for most of us. And this is the thing. This is, this is one of those things I say. It's when ideology meets the reality of the British public as opposed to the media class and the political class and the, and the, the right thinking. Oh, is, am I, well, you know, I've, got a I've got the right flag in my Twitter bio class. Um, because I think for most people, and I'm amazed how many people who have left, right, I mean, whatever, will bring this up with me and will say to me, like, you know, in, in the supermarket, on the tube, well done for standing up on these issues. I'm sure you get that as well. And the, the cheering on of J.K. Rowling standing firm on this. But it seems to me, it's, it's, you don't have to, it doesn't matter what your political allegiance is. If someone is telling you that a man can become a woman simply by saying, that it is so. And because a man becoming a trans woman, you can't be a trans woman without being a man. And that a trans exactly. woman is a woman. So you're saying a man can become a woman. You're either stupid, you didn't follow biology after the age of five. You're dishonest because you're telling us you believe something that you don't believe. Or you're certifiably insane. Now, I don't think any of those three things make someone who should be anywhere near leadership of this country, a school, the NHS, a prison, anything. I completely agree. Uh, I mean, I think you probably left out the looking good in front of a small minority of people who are close to you in your political party. Yeah. And that's really what she was doing. I mean, she seems to be a true believer, strangely, because she could have backed down on this. It wasn't in the, the SNP manifesto to have self-ID, and yet she just ploughed ahead. It's really almost inexplicable, isn't it? Because it's obvious if you just think it through, you know, sure as eggs is eggs, if you say that men can just declare themselves to be women, you will have rapists in women's jails. It will happen. Do, and so it has. Do you think, just finally, that, that we're, we're on the winning winning streak now and that, I mean, that, that, that the, the madness of this, again, it's not transphobic, but just the madness of the pretense that men can become women and women can become men just by, by waving a magic wand, that the, the, the public, have, this has all got to go into the public eye, the, the great sensible common sense called British public was saying, ah, uh -uh, we're not putting up with this nonsense anymore and that actually we can try and bring some more sanity in, back into this debate? 
the thing that's made me happiest is the change in language because people who are reading fast and who are busy will see she and her and woman and they won't register that we're talking about a man. Yeah. But we're starting to see mainstream media refer to people like this rapist Adam Graham as a man yeah. and he. And that's the most important thing yeah. to happen. Oh, by the way, the only way I do explain. it. I do it in breach of you Ofcom do. rules. In breach of yeah. Ofcom rules. I'm more than oh, happy. If Ofcom, if Ofcom do want to actually you know, find the, my, the broadcaster for this, I will happily crowdsource the funding and pay the bill myself because I'm pretty sure we can find enough women who know what a woman is to join in to help pay it, don't you think? Well, thank you very much for doing it, Julia, and you were ahead of the curve on this, but other people are catching up. Likewise. Helen Joyce, Director of Advocacy at Sex Matters and author of Trans, When Ideology Meets Reality.